Hello, this is David Wilcock, and I'm here with Benjamin Fulford. This is another Divine Cosmos audio blog, and this is an exclusive. The reason why I'm interviewing Benjamin Fulford today, which in my time here in Los Angeles, California, would be November 28th, 2011, a Monday. For Ben, it's already Tuesday. The reason why we're doing this interview is that Ben has been talking for a very long time now about a counterinsurgency against what I lovingly call the Old World Order, which is a melange of international characters that started out with an Asian secret society. For those of you who don't already know, I'd like to establish some of his bona fides so it doesn't sound like he's tooting his own horn here. But Ben was the Asia-Pacific bureau chief for Forbes magazine. He has a long history of professional, credentialed academic journalism. And as you can find out from many other interviews that he's done, some of which are on my site, he got involved into a world of intrigue when he started to trace where the money was going from the Japanese economy. He realized the economic stimulus that could be generated to the world was not being used for anything that was positive, and it seemed like a lot of money was disappearing. And that investigative trail actually led to him getting death threats and getting drawn into an Asian secret society as a counterbalance against the old world order guys who also tried to silence him and bribe him by offering him, I forget, Ben, was it an ambassadorship they wanted to give you or something like that? Well, they offered me at one point the job of finance minister of finance Japan. Finance minister of Japan, right. They also, believe it or not, offered me uh, General Electric and General Motors. Really? Well, yeah. Like you would be the CEO or something? Yeah, and I guess I'm a chief shareholder. Chief, um, okay. The problem, of course, is I had to go along with their plan to kill four billion people. It's a classic sell your soul to the devil situation. Right, they just need to lighten the load and get rid of some surplus. That's how they like to talk about it. Well, they, they want to save the environment and get rid of the useless eaters, yeah? Exactly. So, look, man... I, I've been on the Internet since uh, 1996. I've had my own public presence since 1998. And I watched you ever since you came out. And I noticed right off the bat, I believe you emerged in like 2007. Was that correct? Something like that? Yeah, it must have been around that time. Yeah. That, because you, I'd been researching a lot of stuff before then, but I didn't feel it was safe to go out in public because I knew they would kill me. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got protection that I was able to come out and start saying this stuff. Right, and it is true that within Japan, you are a best-selling author. You've sold... Uh, how many books do you have in print, and how many units have you sold? I don't know. More than 30 books, and I don't know, more than maybe a million and all. I wow, have okay. Track. But that's that's... So 30 titles is very substantial. Um, you are fully bilingual. Nobody can challenge that because there's plenty of videos they can watch of you talking fluently in Japanese. I have seen endless iterations of every type of hate comment that somebody would lob at you. And the most frequent one is that they just can't wrap their head around the story. They think that it's too implausible that these Asian secret societies would contact you. But I see that because you're bilingual and because you are a credible financial journalist who then became a best-selling author and quite renowned for these, as you're saying, 30 books that you have in Japan, there's no other gaijing, or what they that's the word they use for foreigner, there's no other gaijing in Japan, there's no other white guy out there that I'm aware of who's doing what you've done. So who else would they have chosen for something like this well, to try to okay. bridge over to the Western world? Sure, look, what, what you have to realize is that um, there, there's a couple of reasons why I fell into this particular niche. One is that um, I wrote a lot of stuff that if I had been a Japanese journalist, I would have been killed for. Oh, really? But because like, I was a foreigner working for a, a visible magazine like Forbes, uh, you know, I was off limits. And this is stuff that would have rattled the chains of the government or stuff that would have insulted the emperor? What are we talking here? 
I'm talking, in, in essence, I'm talking about the, the secret colonial government here. In other words, right. um, they've been using a network of North Koreans and gangsters and, and bribed the Japanese, and they've been using bribery and murder to, to make this country a colony that only uh, is an independent country on the surface. Now, I want to get back to that, but briefly... Okay, but uh, let me, okay, let me just ahead. tell you go how ahead. I got involved yeah. in, in a really short summary. I yeah. Basically, I started writing books in Japanese, and... And this was what I, year, approximately? I guess uh, the, the ones that really caused troubles came out around 2006, and uh, basically saying, you know, the 911 stuff that was uncovered by many researchers in the West. So this was before you ever appeared on Rents or anything in the West? Yeah. Okay. And, and then I had a book out in Japanese that pointed out that uh, SARS was a bioweapon that was designed to kill non-Caucasian people. For those who don't remember, SARS is the bird flu. It's a... Well, it, there's, there's... I mean, basically... I. I quoted from the documents written by the neocons, like the Project for a New American Century and stuff, pointing out very clearly that there was a group of Western elitists who were planning to start World War III and were try planning to reduce the world population, and that we, the Asians could stop this by cutting off their money, because they required Japanese and Chinese money to finance this insane project. And an order came out in the Japanese underworld to have me killed, okay? And the South Korean... That's understandable if you start sure, putting your finger in... The South Korean yeah. secret police then told the Chinese, and the Chinese sent a secret society to offer me protection. And that's how I became involved in a world I never even knew existed until that time. I mean, if you'd talked to me before that about Freemasons and stuff, you would have got a nervous giggle and, and a shrug, and that's about it, you know. Right. It's uh, a it's a it's a funny handshake, and they give money to charity and da 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 da. You know, but right. what? But the other thing is, of course, the Chinese themselves had eavesdropped, you know, one of the conferences at the Bohemian Grove, and they were fully aware of this plan to, you know, reduce the world population and start World War III, and we're trying to stop it. And and when they realized that there was, I was being put on a hit list for, for trying to warn them of something they already knew about, that's how I got involved. <clears throat> okay, one thing, as I'm talking to you, I'm also uh, responding to the fact that when we've published articles in the past, we get two or three hundred written comments on them, and I'm able to read what everybody says and the feedback that they have. And so I'm trying to speak not just for myself, but also for the collective. Now, one of the stumbling blocks that I think we've had in other interviews that people don't get clear on is when you say the Chinese, people naturally think of this repressive government that's like burning people's houses down in Tibet, is restricting YouTube and restricting freedom and won't let people march on Tiananmen Square and is basically just this human rights crushing monster. Um, okay, I guess I, I made a mistake when I said Chinese. Okay. I should have said Asia, okay, because this transcends China. It, it involves uh, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, uh, Japan, Taiwan, Korea. It, it's a pan... In fact, it goes right to the uh, group of non-aligned nations. It's a 77-nation group that included places like Yugoslavia. Uh, so it was wrong of me to call it the Chinese. It's an Asian secret society, okay. not a Chinese secret society. What would be the relationship between this Asian secret society and the current communist government of China? Believe it or not, the old royal families of Asia uh, decided that communism would be the best way to modernize China. Okay. So that behind and above the communist government in China and the mainland, uh, the uh, the uh, government in Taiwan, you'll find an old group of families that whose connections go way beyond beyond 
temporary political structures. Uh, now, this correct, is some, me, correct me if I'm wrong, but China is named after Emperor Qin, who was of the Dragon family, and that was the first dynasty of China, right? Yeah. And so these people, he's the one that built the terracotta soldiers, where he took every soldier and every horse in his army and built a stone sculpture out of them. And there's all sorts of uh, interesting facts about how this dragon family showed up and that they basically kind of erased all the history from China before then, which is now being rebuilt by certain scholars. But that basically, these Asian secret societies appear to be dynastic. They've largely been behind the scenes. They've amassed large amounts of wealth. And that's part of what we're into now, right? That's what we're talking about is... I, you got to remember that it, there are, it, there's not a single, there are several different competing groups, but essentially you have a similar thing both in Asia in, and in the West. You have secret societies that are connected to ancient dynastic bloodlines, okay? Okay. In, in the West, that would be the Rothschilds and the British royal families and the Freemasons and the P2 Lodge, okay? In right. Asia, it would be... Uh, the dragon families, I would guess. Uh, and this would be all the various dynastic uh, families and clan groupings uh, based on, you know, uh, family ties. But in the West, you had a different group that, uh, and it's confusing because there's several groups that call themselves Illuminati, but there's a group that has contacted me uh and they've proven to me they're connected to various agencies as well as international drug smuggling rings, okay? Okay. But uh, they claim they started the uh, French, American, and Russian revolutions and that they are opposed to uh, bloodline rule. And in the same way, the Asians have a secret society that's also based on meritocracy and they're also opposed to bloodline rule and this would be... Uh, a group that, I mean, the, the Chinese triads and the Japanese Yakuza groups and, and these various other uh, secret groups in Asia have strict rules against nepotism. So the, the son of a gang boss could never take over his father's gang. Hmm. Uh, and and uh, these are linked to martial arts societies and uh, also chambers of commerce. There's no clear line between like a, a an official chamber of commerce and outlaw gangsters being chased by the uh, police. It's a it's a it's a gray zone uh, okay. with light gray and dark gray. You know. Okay, uh, I want. So what I'm saying is that you have both in the West and in the East. You have meritocratic secret societies mm -hmm. and bloodline secret societies. Right. Okay. Um, and could you just briefly enunciate for us? I mean. A lot of people have PTSD around hearing about things like Illuminati, and as soon as you say stuff like that, the paranoia kicks in, the fear and the anxiety kicks in. So when you say that these are dynastic bloodline families in Asia, that these are secret societies, are they sacrificing babies? Are they drinking people's blood? Are they doing satanic rituals? I mean, what are we talking about here in terms of who are these people? What do they think? What's their philosophy? What do they want? Do they want to take over the planet? Are they fighting against the Illuminati to control the planet? What's their agenda? Um, well, they think that uh, the, the center or the, the, the control of the future of the, of the planet should no longer be controlled by a small Western elite. And they would rather have it fall under the control of the people of the planet. Um, now, there is a group, of course, of, of chauvinistic people who say China should rule the world in China. Uh, but the general consensus in Asia as a whole is that it should be equal for all the people of the planet and not just a, either a Chinese or a Khazarian-controlled you know, family business that runs the planet. Sure. So when you're talking so about... They, what they say yeah. publicly, I think, is, is really what they expect for now, which is a multipolar world, not one controlled by a single group. 
Okay, another question which I think might help to allay the skeptics, because there's a lot of them, and they're very nasty, uh, is could there be the possibility of a single point failure in what you're telling us? In other words, is it possible that all of the stuff that you just told me about these Chinese secret societies is the result of you meeting one or two guys and them telling you these elaborate stories and you call the guy on the phone every other day and he gives you new information... But that's yeah. it. Yeah, all right. Listen, I was a journalist. I've been a journalist here for more than 25 years. I've met most of the post war prime ministers in Japan. I've wow. met finance ministers, the heads of most of the large corporations in Asia. Remember, I was the Asia Pacific bureau chief for the world's largest business magazine. Well, what does that really mean? I mean, how do you get to meet that, a prime minister? Why I would, would they talk to, to you? I would go to. Taiwan, I'd go to China, I'd go to Russia, I'd go to Vietnam, I'd go to Australia, and I'd meet the heads of large corporations uh, who want to publicize their companies. Well, what I'm trying to say is that were you selling I've advertisements? Met hundreds of people, but also just okay. more recently, since quitting that job, um, I've literally my sources run into the hundreds um, and. I know the bosses of the triads, the Yakuza gangs. Uh, I know the heads of the, the, the Japanese um, military intelligence and the police forces here. I, I know the heads of the martial arts societies. Um, I've talked to top, you know, the Politburo members in China. Uh, so no, it's not me talking to one handler or two handlers feeding me disinformation. However. Uh, it's true that they've thrown all sorts of disinformation my way to try to, you know, ruin my credibility. But at the end of the day, and this is what people need to realize, is that uh, I don't really need to prove this uh, to the public at large because we're trying to convince right now the heads of the Pentagon, the CIA, the NSA, the KGB, the Freemasons. In other words, we're trying to convince the people who control the, the military industrial complex and the politicians that this is a better plan than what's in place now. 